I'll make a bet that uh, Elon is the one who's going to pick up a fight with the SEC. Hello everyone today we are bringing you the exciting list of guests with Caitlin Long, Alex Mashinsky, Billy Barrett, and Mike Alfred. Caitlin Long is a 22-year Wall Street veteran who has been active in Bitcoin since 2012 and whose passion is a fair and stable financial system. In this video, she believes that central coin custodian is not a safe way to keep your Bitcoins. Alex Mashinsky, as the founder of eight startups and three unicorns, Alex has raised more than $1.5B with over $3B plus in exits, 50 plus patents, and now leads the Celsius team. He says in the video that you're gonna see a lot of these fiat currencies collapse, that he also said that the system is not sound, the system is drowning under the debt. He predicts that I'll make a bet that Elon Musk will pick up a fight with SEC. Bill Barrett is a serial entrepreneur and the co-founder and CEO of Abra, a new type of digital cash payments app. Mike Alfred is value-oriented investor with a very long-term perspective. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Well, a lot of a lot of countries, I think countries in general divide into like three groups. You have uh, uh, reserve currency countries, again, Europe, US, Japan. Uh, you have uh, countries that have their own currency and they're, they're very aggressively trying to defend uh, their ability to print money. They don't want somebody else coming in and printing money or issuing currencies. And then you have com countries like El Salvador and others that don't have their own currency. And they're basically saying, look, I used to be pegged to the dollar. Now I'm also uh, going to offer uh, this other uh, currency, right? So so I think uh, uh, the question is where more and more countries are going to go to, right? So, so uh, you're going to see it's like dominoes, right? You're going to see a lot of these fiat currencies just collapse. Uh, the citizens of Turkey woke up one morning and their currency was worth 50% of what it was the day before, right? And Lebanon and, and Argentina, and then I can give you 20 other countries, Venezuela and so on. So, so uh, you know, so the, the last domino is the US dollar and everybody thinks that that is like bedrock, uh, but it's not bedrock, it's just another domino, you know? So, so if, if all of these dominoes keep falling, uh, even the mighty U.S. dollar is not going to be able to uh, halt all of that. And we're seeing this runaway inflation. We're seeing uh, the Fed kind of really getting nervous. And, and despite the stock market having a heart attack, saying, nope, I'm going to continue and withdraw liquidity. I'm going to continue and raise rates. I'm going to, uh, again, squeeze as hard as I can to make sure that because I'm afraid of inflation much more than I'm afraid of uh, all of you guys suffering because uh, you're going to lose half of your stocks or bonds or whatever else. <clears throat> I'll make a bet that uh, Elon is the one who's going to pick up a fight with the SEC because I think, I don't know if you saw the news, but uh, you know Twitter is enabling uh, payments on uh, Polygon with uh, stable coins and other coins. And Doge is obviously going to be one of the enabled services and i think uh very quickly the regulators are going to come on and knock on his door and he's not the one he's one of those guys who just uh says you want to go to court let's go to court you know yeah, no exactly. problem so so uh so uh, for like like you said i mean for for a lot of us and um, um you know following the current regulation is what we have to do uh but uh you know uh, we definitely sooner or later we're going to hit uh, a point at which uh, all this is going to be tested just like xrp is testing the sec boundaries uh, on a different right. front and, and we'll find out uh, you know what the what the judges are thinking or what the ruling is and and uh and go from there uh as late as september of 2019 okay this is we talked just talk about most people think the last time we bailed out the banks was in uh 2008 right with 800 billion dollar um uh, bailout but actually uh, jp morgan needed a bailout in, in september of 2019 and right now the reverse repo market is over a trillion dollars the only one the only one in the middle there is the federal reserve uh, providing all that liquidity no bank really trusts any other bank right now okay so if they need to be in the middle they wouldn't be in the middle so so and all these banks were tested very recently for, uh, you know, 20% uh, drawdown, a 30% drawdown. Well, Celsius went through five, 50, 60% drawdowns. 
five of them, right? No bank. I asked regular, I was sitting with regulars. I asked them, would any one of your other banks that you supervise uh, pass a 50% drawdown event without you bailing them out? And they said, you're right, they won't. So, so really, uh, we, we, we're, we're talking from both sides of our mouth here, if we're thinking somehow that both banks and regulators are safe and they're sound and their practices are, are, are great, right? So, so um, uh, if you look at the numbers and the actual numbers, uh, you will see that, uh, you know, like, again, the, the, the system is not sound. The system is uh, drowning under all this debt and all of this. Uh, and all we're doing again and again and again is kicking the can down the road and basically, uh, you know, reflating the markets, printing money and giving the banks another opportunity, another opportunity to make earnings by taking those fees or, or charging the consumers uh, uh, stuff so the ba banks can can basically recapitalize themselves. So, so I think the problem here is not crypto or crypto offering yield. Okay, the problem is that our financial system is very sick. It's very, uh, it's on the edge, and and we are the best house in the neighborhood. Everybody else, every other fiat currency is worse than the dollar. So, so this entire financial system, the fiat system, is is, is sick, and and you need to replace that with something that is completely detached or completely uh, unassociated with with that, all that infrastructure. And a lot of the companies that came to crypto came from Wall Street and they brought the worst practices. The fast money crowd. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So the fees in crypto are higher than the fees by banks. You, you If you buy Bitcoin from Coinbase, you pay 7% on your credit card. You know, show me a bank that charges you 7% to buy a stock. If you you can get 100 to 1 leverage right uh, uh, which which should be illegal right anywhere on the planet and so on so all what all these things do is they hurt our community they make us recycle users they make people come to crypto get burned and then they take the next flight back to fiat land and they'll never come here again and it's because of the greed of these people who are coming from the from the uh, uh, wall street community and they're just here to make profit they're not here to build the future Right? They're just here to grab as much as possible. That's why I'm, I'm, I, I don't get invited to all these fancy parties in the, in the Hampton <laughs> or anywhere else because I'm just a truth teller. You know, I'm like, everybody's like, oh, don't invite that guy. You know, we don't want him ruining the party. I'm, I'm you know, like, so, so if we want to change all of this, yes, let's go and create the future, create all of these proofs. And you can't fool all the people all the time. I think most of the community is going to realize sooner or later who is here to do good and do well and who is here just to do well, you know, and just to steal from everybody else. And I would challenge all of you guys on the on the lending. Bitcoin's a disinflationary asset. I love what Andreas Antonopoulos says. You don't need yield on this. Just holding Bitcoin itself is 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 getting you ahead because of of the fact that bitcoin itself is a, is is a disinflationary asset the the amount of inflation in bitcoin is what i think it's 1.8 percent now is the is the inflation rate annualized in bitcoin that's how much additional bitcoin is being mined pursuant to the algorithm that is not going to be changed at this point okay and every four years that inflation rate gets cut in half that is a lot less than the eight nine percent reported inflation that we're seeing um, in the United States right now, right? So you know it's a disinflationary asset and you don't need to leverage it. And if you leverage it, you are you are essentially creating risk for yourself that you're picking up pennies in front of a freight train, to use an old Wall Street phrase, uh, that you just, you know, they're, you're taking on counterparty risk and you don't even know whether the 8% yields that you're, that you're earning on your Bitcoin compensate you for that counterparty risk. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Alex Mashinsky, Caitlin Long, Mike Alfred, and Bill Barrett. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.